One interesting transformation is that of enlargement. And you would get a question like this. Enlarge triangle A by a scale factor of 2, center the origin. Label your new triangle B. My advice would be first to find the center. Here it says center the origin. And the origin, you might know, is the point 0, 0, which in red is just here. Now enlargement means to make something bigger, generally, or certainly to change its size. So that's what we're going to do with this transformation of enlargement. But what on earth is this scale factor of 2? To cut a long story short, a scale factor of 2 means it's going to get twice as big. It scales up by a factor of 2. Scale factor 3 would make things three times as big. Scale factor a half would make something half as big, etc. But how would we do that? And certainly, how would we do that with the center of the origin? My advice is to count from your center to your shape. I'm going to write that down. Count from the center to your shape. How would we do that? Well, see here, we're at 0, 0. How do we get to this corner of the triangle? Well, we'd have to go one right and then one, two up. So one right and two up. Now, we simply use the scale factor of two, which means twice as big. So we multiply that by two. So instead of going one right and two up, we now go two right and four up. So instead of going one right, we go two right. Instead of going one, two up, sorry, we go four up. Always starting at the center. Let's do that. Two right, four up. Here's our first point. That's where this corner, which we picked here, this bottom left-hand corner, is now going to be on our new shape. Before, it was one right and two up. Now it's going to be two right and four up. That's the bottom left-hand corner of our new shape. How about the bottom right-hand corner here? Let's count from the center to our shape. That's one, two, three, four right, and one, two up. Four right and two up. What's it going to be now, then? Instead of four right, it's now going to be eight right. Instead of two up, it's now going to be four up, which is here. 8 right from the center, and 4 up. How about the top left-hand corner here? That's 1 right and 4 up. So now it's going to be not 1 and 4, 2 and 8. So 2 right and 8 up. We multiplied everything by the scale factor of 2. So there we have our new shape, our new triangle enlarged by a scale factor of 2. Now don't forget, the question said, label your new triangle B, and you don't want to lose marks for forgetting to label it, so let's label that B. There's a nice little way you can check to see whether you've got the right answer, and that's to draw lines from the center through the corners of your shape. So here's our line through the top left-hand corner, and yes, it does indeed go through the new shape we drew. How about the one from the bottom left? Well, if we draw a line from the center through the bottom left, yes, it does go through the bottom left of our shape. And finally, draw a line from the center through the bottom right, and yes, our new shape is on that line. You don't have to do the lines. You can just do the counting method, but the lines can sometimes help. Let's practice this one more time with a new question. For example, if we had to enlarge a rectangle P by a scale factor of a half, center minus 2, minus 3. Now obviously we need a rectangle to enlarge, so let's make one up. There it is. What's our first step? 
let's label it at P. What is our first step? Our first step is to find the center. Where is this center, minus 2, minus 3, that we're going to be counting from? Minus 2 along the corridor, minus 3 down the stairs. So that would be right here. There's our center. Okay, but this is weird. Scale factor of a half. That means it's going to be scaled down by a factor of a half. In other words, it's going to be half as big. That's interesting. Let's do our counting trick, though. The same counting trick as before. How do we get to this top right-hand corner? We'd have to go 1, 2, 3 down, 1, 2, 3 across, 3 down, 3 across. So now, we don't go 3 down, 3 across. What do we do? Well, it's a scale factor of a half. So before, we multiplied it by 2. Now, we multiply it by a half. In other words, it goes half as far. Not 3 and 3, but 1 and a half, 1 and a half. We half it, basically. Just like before, we doubled it. Now we half it. We counted three down, three left, so we half that. One and a half down, one and a half left. So there is our top right hand corner for our new shape. What about the bottom right? That's five down, one, two, three, four, five, and three left, one, two, three. What's half of five and three? It's two and a half and one and a half. So we half that. It's a little more tricky because we're dealing with halves, but I think you're, you're getting the idea. Let's do the top left-hand corner. That is 3 down and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 left. So instead of 3 down and 7 left, we half it. So that's 1 and a half down and half of 7 three and a half left. One, two, three and a half. And you can begin to see what's happening. The shape has been halved. Finally, the bottom left hand corner. One, two, three, four, five down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Half of five and seven. Two and a half and three and a half. And there is our new rectangle. Enlarged by a scale factor of a half. That's how we do enlargement, and as we saw before, we could check that by drawing lines through our shape and see if it touches the original shape, and indeed it does. If you draw lines through the corners, they should all match up, and in our case, they do. So we know we've done it right. And finally, the bottom left. Does it go through the bottom left? Indeed it does. The only thing that can help most of all with enlargement is practice. So have a go at practicing scale factors of enlargement.